What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis, this is TWA Motorsports, and today, yes, this Sierra actually did get kinda wrecked. Um, so let me explain. It's kind of embarrassing, guys. If you watched the video when I put the exhaust on this thing, um, I took it out, I did a huge burnout. What I didn't show you, um, and I didn't catch it on video because I was out of the frame, but I caught a slick spot. We have chip and sealed road here. And so a lot of times there's, there's spots that are kind of like flat or really slick where the tar has seeped through. It's like 20 degrees that day when I did that video for you guys and it caught a loose spot and I went right into the ditch. I know it's embarrassing. Uh, I haven't went in the ditch with a vehicle doing stupid stuff like that since I was like in high school uh, on a gravel road in my first truck being dumb. Um, so it's embarrassing and uh, ultimately I don't know that I was gonna tell you guys but hey crap happens and uh, when you do stupid things sometimes it happens so anyway uh, it didn't hurt the truck that bad we're gonna go over and look guys we've got um, you're gonna kind of see some of this video beforehand so I I'm kind of doing batch filming at the same time but um, what did we break on the Sierra well luckily guys the ditch that I went into is right beside my house uh, like I said, it was right out of the frame, and I'll show you a clip here. So as you can hear uh, at the end of that clip, um, you could hear me on the brakes trying to avoid it once it got loose, but there was just no way to do it, no way to avoid it. And you can see our valance is gone. And uh, well, <laughs> it didn't knock the valance off, but it did break, I mean shattered the fog light on this side. So we went into the ditch on the passenger side here. Guys, I already put it up on the lift. I cleaned all the dirt out from under it. The only thing that it messed up was the front valance. And it didn't break the front valance. It just broke the fog light and kind of kind of scratched it up a little bit, some light scratch as well. Um, a couple things. So I was going to do this anyway, so it's not like I was trying to put it in the ditch, but ultimately sometimes that happens. And um, anyway, I wanted to paint that. So you guys, if you remember watching my dad's videos a few uh, videos back, he painted that with trim paint and it looks so much better because it's not that off gray. It's like a black which m matches the, there's no other gray on this truck so it's annoying to me that that was gray but that's the way they come and uh so i wanted to paint it black the other thing is guys when i put the fog lights on this truck way back in the day i bought some tyc lights because i do like tyc replacement lights they seem to be pretty good well on the fog lights the fog lights themselves um bounce so the housings seem okay. It's the bracketry that comes with the TYC stuff that sucks. Um, when you're going down the road and hit a bump, it almost looks like they're flashing because they're bouncing so much. And I've adjusted and put more screws in them and tried to glue them. I haven't showed you guys that, but ultimately I never could get them to work like a factory one. So I found um, some factory fog lights, brand new from GM, and I'll try to list that in the description. I think they're like on the verge of being discontinued, but you can still nab them. They are expensive, guys. They're about 150 bucks a piece. So ultimately, this little trip into the ditch is gonna cost me about uh, 350 bucks if you include paint and prep and all that. So um, yeah, it happens. Anyway, um, I've got, so like I said, guys, I'm batch filming, so I'm painting up in my uh, top garage. So we're going to go up there, take a look at the valance, and uh, we're going to talk about what we're going to be painting it with. And then I'll show you over here the um, fog lights that I got. Like I said, I got them from GM. I already took them out of the GM boxes, but this is them here. Uh, you can see one wrapped up and the other. And um, so this is a GM one, and then this is what's, this is the opposite side. So this is the side that didn't get broken. Um, this is the TYC. So if you look at the adjustments, they look almost identical. But I'm telling you guys, for some reason, this pivot point right here, the GM ones work really, really well. And you can see this is old stock. It's got a ton of dust on it. Uh, this one didn't come wrapped in plastic like this one. Uh, I kind of complained about that, but ultimately there's nothing wrong with the light itself. But 
it's just a thicker plastic. This is thicker where this mounts right here. Like I said, I tried to put some glue in this to try to get it to stay and not bounce as much, but there was nothing that I could do. If you also notice, look at the spring difference between the TYC and the factory one. So quite a bit more um, keeping pressure up against that. So ultimately guys, I know it's expensive, but if you don't want them to bounce around, that may be your best avenue. And like I said, I'll list that stuff in the description, but let's go up and take a look at what we're going to do to the balance. So you can see, I've got this all set up guys. I just painted the carpet that you saw in a few videos back. Um, anyway, this is what we've got. So this is the factory balance and this is actually a GM balance. Um, you can see there's a bunch of dirt on it, but guys, ultimately this is the side. Wait a minute. I got to get my, yeah, this is the side right here that went into the ditch. It did crack that guy right there, but that's not going to be a problem. This thing snugs up pretty good. Um, I went ahead and took all the clips out, but you can see kind of the marring that it put on this. And so here's the first step. Obviously it's got a bunch of dirt on it. Look at all the dirt. Um, I need to clean all of that dirt off. And uh, once I get that dirt cleaned off, then we are going to use that scotch bright down there and some rubbing alcohol that you see right here. And then we are going to get um, the trim paint out. And I will show you guys that in a minute. It's actually in the house. It's kind of a crappy day out here. So ultimately um, not the greatest day to paint, but when I close the garage door and open a window, it can stay about 60 degrees in here. So that should be good as far as getting this to tack up and not have any issues. But I wanna make sure that uh, I get it nice and clean I don't want to have any issues whatsoever with it sticking. And then my dad actually didn't even spray the back of his. I may not either guys. I may spray the ledges from the back here so you don't see any gray, but ultimately I don't really think there's a reason to waste a bunch of paint on the back side of it because you're never going to see it. And uh, kind of how these pieces come painted, uh, they're, they're not really well finished on the back anyway. So either way, let's get this thing cleaned up. I won't show you guys that. I'm just going to use some, uh, like super clean to get the dirt off of it. And then I may time lapse um, some of our scuffing with the scotch bright. I've actually got it hung from a from the ceiling here, so it's a little bit easier to get um, not only painted, but to kind of scuff on. Once we've got it kind of cleaned up, like I said, got all the dirt off of it, I wanted to, I'm wanting to scuff it up. And so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna scuff it with a red scotch bright first. And then, and I'm going to go all the way around the ledges. So we want it to, I need to move that ladder over there. Um, we want it to kind of adhere. I'm not going to be using any kind of adhesion promoter. I'm just going to be using this trim paint. That's what my dad did on his. He scuffed it up. And um, I'm trying to go the same direction other than in the tail, or in the openings here. But I want to try to... I don't know if that makes sense. I want to kind of go all the same way, just in case, you know, we put some big scuffs in it. I don't think we will with this, but anyway, so once I do this over the whole thing, and I'm probably, like I said, guys, I'm not going to scuff the back. I just cleaned it and I may lightly miss the back, but once I go over it, I'm going to wipe it down with some alcohol that I've got down here in the floor. And I wanna make sure I get this leading edge. I don't want it to start peeling on the ledge. So I'm gonna wrap it around the ledge even though it'll be under the bumper. And the good thing about this is look, if it doesn't work, we could order another one or we could just respray it. So I guess I actually, I was gonna show you guys a majority of this, but there's no sense. I mean, you can see what I'm doing here. You know the products that I'm using. Let me knock this out real quick and I'll time lapse the spraying of it because I don't know if you're like me, but I'm kind of weird and like to watch stuff get painted that's, you know, a different color. Got it completely scuffed. I went over it three times with that scotch bright. Cleaned it with alcohol between each pass. And so now I've got it, the last pass with the scotch bright. I'm gonna clean it off one more time. I'm gonna let it set here and dry and we're gonna go grab the paint. I'm gonna show you what we're gonna use and we're gonna get this thing dyed. Here is what we are using. Um, it's just dupla color trim and bumper paint guys. And it honestly, it's more of a dye than it is a paint. So, and that's how we're going to apply it. We're going to put 
thin coats, like almost doesn't look like it's covered. Um, and that is really, really important if you want it to stick. So um, that is what my dad used, not only on his piece like this, but he also used it on his wiper cow. And then I've got a buddy that also used it on his Trans Am wiper cow. So um, I think, well, you know, time will tell whether it holds up. I know a lot of people will say, you know, why don't you just color match it? Well, and maybe I do that. Maybe if this doesn't work, I'll take it out to my painter and uh, have it color matched or even painted black. Uh, I don't necessarily love it being color matched that low. It's going to catch some rocks, guys, when you drive it. So um, this, we'll just see how it holds up, you know, and I'll kind of let you guys know if I ever have to touch it back up. But we're going to get started. I'm going to shake this up really well. I've been letting this can set inside to get warm. This has all uh, dried up after the last wipe down. Let's get going. I'm sure the camera isn't showing up as good as it as it could, but you can see it, it almost looks like you speckle painted it. That's what we want. We don't want, we're not trying to cover in one coat. We're just trying to mist it on and dye this piece. So um, guys, I, I'll time lapse the rest of my painting, but uh, ultimately I'm probably gonna put, I don't know, three or four coats. I'm letting, I've got a timer set. I'm doing 10 minutes between each coat, just like the bottle says. And uh, so we'll give it a shot and uh, see what we get. It's really, I've noticed it's kind of hard down here. I'm gonna have to get a light to make sure that we've got coverage uh, as we get closer and closer. So I may grab the light on the next coat. But um, so far it looks like it's, you know, laying down pretty evenly. Just make sure you shake up your can well. So after letting it set for a while, it's all dried, looks really good. I, you know, who knows how long it'll hold up. You know, it's on the front of the truck, it's gonna be catching bugs, but it feels good. Um, you know, I put a lot of thin coats on it. I didn't show you guys, I put, I put another, I used a whole can on it and part of another can. So I didn't show you guys all that, but I went ahead and cleaned up my clips and got my clips back in place. So the whole piece, so I've got the center in there and everything, because then the last time I did this, it seemed like it was easier to snap them all in at one time. So that's what we're gonna attempt to do, but let's go crawl under the truck because I have a couple of, I've got some replacements, but these guys, these actually sit in the bumper and I had two of those that were broken on the side where we hit. And uh, so I'm gonna make sure that these are all good Let's crawl under that thing and see how many of these we need to replace, if any. I think there were two or three that were bad. So we need to put these in. And then um, I'm gonna snap this in place. Normally I like to, the fog lights are kind of a pain, especially on a lowered truck, but we'll, 
I think I'm going to lift the front end of it up or put it on my lift or something. But for now, I want it as close to the ground as possible so I can hold this thing while I'm trying to snap it in. But let's go get underneath it and see what we need to replace. So you can see the pieces that I'm talking about on the bottom of the bumper. So you can see we're missing one here. That one, well, I see that. Maybe there's not one there. Oh yeah, there's supposed to be. So maybe these are the wrong size. Yeah, that definitely does not fit. I'm gonna have to find some different ones. That hole's too big. So these are aftermarket ones. I may have to hunt down some GM ones. This one's broken as well. It's just part of it's hanging in there. I wonder if it'll fit in this side. Okay, this one seems to kind of want to go. Oh wait, no, there's more. Huh, that's interesting that the holes are different sizes. So what I may do is I may take some of the factory ones out and move them around. That one fits. It's this one that's an oddball size. That's weird. Okay, let me see if I can move maybe one out of this and um, put it in the other or something, I don't know. I was able to move a couple clips around. Actually guys, they're all the same size. Um, that hole's just a little bit bigger. So able to get it fitted in there. So now we've got new clips in the places they were broke. So we're gonna snap this thing into place. Wish me luck. I'm not gonna set you guys up on the tripod to watch me snap it in. We'll see if we can just uh, get it in there without scraping it all over the ground. and. Anyway, that's why I wanted it as low as possible. Definitely looks better, guys. Um, probably should have brought the front end up a little bit or got it on some jack stands or a jack because it was a little closer to the ground than I thought. Um, I thought I'd like it closer just so I didn't have to hold that up. I could kind of just rest it on my leg while I was snapping it in. But at the same time, I couldn't get my thumb around the middle because the hardest clips to get started are the ones like under the, where the license plate would go. You gotta kind of reach up in that lip and you only have so much room to get them snapped in. But was able to get them snapped in and they were all together. So the centers were pushed all the way in. That does seem to be the best way. But either way, we got it on there. Fits good, looks good. Um, I'll try to take it outside later in the video and um, maybe we can get a better look at what it is. The thing's nasty, it's got dust, it's got some bugs on the front of it. It needs a good wash up anyway. But now, let's see if we can grab the fog lights and um, I'm either gonna put it on my lift, cause I'm not gonna try to cross, it's so hard to get to those 10 millimeters on the top side, but I wanna put those new GM fog lights in and um, get the bulbs back in. I, the bulbs, it didn't hurt the bulbs, so we're gonna be reusing the original uh, bulbs that we had in it from when we had put the fog lights on. And they're just some LED aftermarket ones, So, but I wanna go ahead and get those in next. So to get the fog lights on, um, this is kinda how they work. So they set in the bumper, or in that little opening of the piece we just put on, but they kind of set on the top side of the bumper. In order to do that, you're gonna have to have the original clips. Guys, um, you can probably find these. If you find them at a local parts store, generally they're kind of short. Um, these are kind of crusty looking because I actually robbed them from a salvage yard truck back when I did this. So these are generally 10 millimeter. So if you go to the salvage yard looking for just the clips um, and maybe you get lucky and find a set of good bulbs or actual housings. So either way, good luck on finding the stock housing. I'll try to list it in the description, but guys, I know they're getting few and far between. I actually had to dust this one off like you saw earlier uh, in the video. It's, <laughs> it's, it, it was completely covered in dust, but it did come in an original GM box. Either way, I'm going to Put these clips on there and we'll see if we can get these uh, 10 millimeters started. I've got the truck off the ground here. So you can see I've got some jack stands underneath, but it's just too hard on these lowered trucks to get underneath. So I'm gonna grab my light and I'll just kind of try to show you guys once I get it in place. Now, if you have the original bumper, you can see where I put the clips in. There should be holes um, in every GM bumper for that. Even the aftermarket ones have the holes, so that is where you put those clips. Um, the other thing, guys, is I put, sorry, I'm hitting the mic on everything, but I got a series of a short, they're all quarter inch drive, but short 10, a ratcheting 10, and a deep dish 10, or a deep 10. And um, I, you know, 
it, you're just gonna have to kind of experiment. This has a little bit of play. You can see one of the holes is slotted and one isn't. So you're gonna have to kind of move it around and make it fit. Now, it is not going to fit in the housing perfect, I will tell you that. Uh, it's just not made that way. So, of course, my light just died. Either way, I'm gonna get this light up in there and get these 10 started and we'll kind of make some adjustments as needed. Got that one in and, um, you know, it fits just as crappy as they all do. <laughs> you could try to uh, put a spacer underneath that and lift this thing up, um, like between the piece we snapped into the bumper and the actual plastic. Uh, the problem is, guys, then you run into an issue where sometimes they're not, um, the, your adjustment isn't right. So what I try to do is split the difference between the right and the left as far as the gap here. But the bottom to top, the only way you can adjust that would really be to uh, put a spacer underneath it or try to bend the bumper possibly. But I don't know that I necessarily want to do either one of those, but it is setting on the plastic on the bottom. Now I can adjust it. The problem is, is then they're gonna be facing um, up in the sky. So see, I can get it kind of there. We may, we may see where it points and go from there because that kind of helps split that difference. But either way, you're just gonna have to kind of work with them, adjust them. You don't want them like blinding people, especially if you put some LEDs in them like I have. So we'll just kind of have to see when we get it set down kind of where they're pointing. And if I have to put a spacer in, I guess maybe I'll go back and do that. Got them both in side to side. So now all we need to do is take the lights out. Um, I just left the originals in there um, while we put them up in place. We'll take those out and put our LEDs back in and we'll test them. Got the bulbs plugged in. Guys, I use Beam Tech is what I got originally. You can see them in there. They fit really, really nice in that factory housing. No play or anything. Uh, so let's let's set it down and maybe I can get a little bit of aim against the garage door in front of me Just to kind of see I'm gonna grab the jack stands out from under it and um, Set it down and turn them on So the lights work I just can't here's the problem you can't turn the headlights off and only run the fog lights They look like they need to come down just a little bit I don't even know that I ever, I think I maybe aim the headlights. So there's a, a turn screw adjustment. Oh yeah, this one needs to come. That's way up there. You can see it even with the headlight. We'll keep bringing it down and see what we can get here. Oh my goodness. Yeah, now it's breaking up against the bottom. Like I said, there's just, the fitment is terrible. But now they're even, at least. You can see the one over there on the other side. Um, oh, I just hate the fitment of these things. I mean, I love the look of them, and I rarely use them, guys. I mean, of course, I don't drive this truck a ton. But see that, that bounciness? I'm gonna see if I can tighten that. I didn't get this one quite as tight on the other side, but that's what I'm talking about. And you're going on the road, if you hit a bump, um, the other ones were really, really bad about that. That flickering. Uh, the light's not actually going out, it's just bouncing around. Yeah, I'm gonna snug that one down a little more, but I think, I think we're good there. There's one other thing I wanna do here on the inside of the truck, and I'll show you guys after I, I'm gonna adjust this. I won't show you any more of this, but I'm gonna pull this piece out on the inside. I wanna adjust or mess with a little bit. The next thing I wanted to address, it's been just driving me crazy. So ever since I put the subs in, every time the base hits, this panel rattles. And I don't know if it's the child seat deal. You guys saw me do this in the black truck, but I'm gonna take that panel out and we're gonna use some of this um, kill mat some 80 mil kill mat on this stuff, um, similar to what I did in this truck. So I want to see if we can eliminate that rattle. So I'm gonna put some both on the little pieces that cover the child safety latch deal. And then I wanna put some on the whole back panel. Now we did this entire truck in kill mat. So from top to bottom, all the way around, and it's, it's pretty quiet on the inside, but I hate rattles and squeaks. So we're gonna pull that out and see if we can address that. Now be very careful when you're taking this thing out. Put your hand behind it, go where the clips are, and kind of pop it towards you as opposed to pulling it. Otherwise you'll snap it, especially it's kind of cool out here in my shop. Um, the colder it is, the more likely you are to snap it. But I was able to get it off with all the clips in place. They all look good. Um, 
I'm going to adjust, see that one, how it's kind of loose. I'm gonna kind of adjust them a little bit, make sure they're nice and snug. And then um, we're gonna apply some of this kill mat to both this and these two pieces to see if we can eliminate that rattle. So other than kind of spreading each one of these apart to make sure it's really solid. And when I say spreading this apart, this center piece right here, this big long center piece, hopefully you guys can see that. The center, if you take a flathead screwdriver and kind of pry it out, that will help make sure it's nice and snug when you snap it in because that is what holds it. So after a little bit of work, um, got some pieces rolled out. You can see I just kind of use scrap pieces. I did cut the center out of two big ones, uh, but the rest of it I just used kind of scrap. Same thing on these guys. I really think this is our rattling issue. I may double up on this, but I'm gonna snap this thing back in. Like I said, I bent all the prongs out a little so it gets an additional, a uh, little bit of cinch down, I guess. And I'm um, hoping it goes in because, like I said, the whole back of the truck um, is coated in that stuff. You can see I had a terrible time finding the holes to line up when I originally did this. So I'm gonna snap this thing back into place. I did use some alcohol. Make sure you do that before. Um, this thing had some um, chemical guys on it, so I'm sure that it was coated on both sides. Just, you know, make sure you have good adhesion. But other than that, let's put it in there and uh, maybe we'll see if that fix our issue. Just uh, hammered on the stereo a little bit and um, didn't fix it. <laughs> Wouldn't you know, go to that trouble, it doesn't fix it. But anyway, guys, um, here's where I think it's rattling. If I push in the center section, I don't know if you guys can see that bow up like that. That's where it's rattling. It's on that ledge. And so I've got a couple options here. I can go back and put another layer maybe on this. Hear that? Or... I can put a layer on the truck or I can just put some felt right there. I think what I, I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some just strips of felt and I'm going to tuck it down in there because I can do that without having to remove this panel. This panel was a, an incredible pain to get back on with all of that stuff on it. So I'm afraid we're going to get to the point where we can't get it back on. So if I can just tuck some felt pieces of felt underneath that, um, I think that'll fix our issue. Here's what I found. I've got a couple pieces of foam, really thin. It's got some two-sided tape on it. I'm gonna see if I can wedge those down in there. The other thing, guys, I have, and this may, this may work a little better, but it's pretty thick. These are for like the bottom of chairs. And um, putting stuff like this in will keep, you know, plastic from rattling on plastic. So what I may do, like I said, is maybe a combination of both and see if that rattle still happens. You know, like I said, the rattle is Right there I hate rattles I hate them so I'm gonna stuff some of this in there I'm just gonna see if I can pull it back with a plastic clip remover uh, like a plastic pry tool see if I can wedge those down in there if not I'm gonna have to pull that piece back off ah, I got it so it's exciting um, here's the deal I thought it was the plastic um, maybe not adhering or getting up where it needs to be Here's the problem. There is a piece of plastic. I don't know if you guys saw it. If you go back and look at when I had, when I was, you know, putting the stuff on the back, there are like six, five or six pieces of like ridges that go across right after the bend here. So there's one like right here in the middle, one like here, back here. And that is what was hitting. Now you can hear, I don't have my rattle anymore. I wrapped every one of those in that foam that I just showed you. And, um, you know, pretty much anything will work. But once I did that, all my rattles are gone, which is really exciting. I hate, like I said, guys, I hate rattles. Now I have developed a new rattle in the door, the light on that door over there. So like this um, courtesy light, I'm pretty sure that my lens is starting to separate it. Or at least it seems like it, but we may have to address that in another video. But either way, guys, I am finished. I'm, uh, I was gonna pull this outside and show you guys, but I really wanna clean it up and it's actually spitting rain right now. So either way, you guys can kind of tell how much better this looks. I mean, I think it looks better than the black or the gray that it was before. I wish I had one side by side so you could see the difference. And you know, time will tell whether they hold up or not. Um, I also got that light to not flicker when I was going down the road by just snugging it up. I didn't quite have it tight enough, but I'm excited. Um, I'm not excited for the reason I had to fix this. But guys, crap like that happens. And uh, ultimately it's fixed. It was an easy fix. I wanted to paint that black anyway. I wanted to replace those lights. So 
it's done. And we got rid of some rattles, but let me know if you guys like this thing. Um, I, I think I have a lot of green MBS fans out there. Maybe not green, but I got a lot of MBS fans out there. And uh, I, guys, I don't see this truck going anywhere. Now I still have some stuff that I wanna do, so we're not finished. Uh, I know that it's probably looking like we're finished and we've came a very long way, but I still have several things planned for this. I uh, don't know how soon we're gonna get to them because they're starting to get more on the expensive side, uh, but all the cheaper stuff is done, I guess you could say. But if you guys did enjoy this video, please like always smash that thumbs up button. Guys, if you are not subscribed, go down there, hit that subscribe button. Of course, while you're down there doing all of that, ring the bell icon that notifies you every time we put up a new video and stay tuned to see what we work on next.